Well, that is a pretty special relationship. We're going to get to hear from Holton Ehlers coming up in just a minute. Rini, when we look ahead to this Pirates team, kind of a young team that's learned to grow under Mike Houston. What are your expectations for them for 2021? Yeah, third year under Mike Houston. That's usually the year that you see the biggest turnaround. And so I, I would expect them, and they showed a lot of flashes last year. Of course, COVID caused issues with them as well, but a lot of really good flashes last year. So I expect a good season out of ECU. And listen, they're my surprise team in the American this year. I think they're going to knock some teams off that people don't think they can. And I think they're going to be a, a, a team to fight with this year for sure. Yeah, 21 returning starters. Let's now chat with head coach Mike Houston. Coach, you know, last year was so different. I just, how much has your team improved and how, what is it shaping up to be like for the 2021 season? Well, it's uh, certainly the last year has been, uh, the year and a half has been unprecedented, but, you know, at least, um, you know, having a spring and a full summer uh, with the players here, uh, being able to train with our strength and conditioning staff, being able to spend time with our coaching staff. Um, we do have a young roster, but uh, they've grown so much and, and we're, you know, bigger, faster, stronger than we were a year ago. Um, our depth is improved drastically. Uh, and, you know, we really like the roster we have in our program right now. So we're excited. We're excited about this fall, but we're excited about beyond, too. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, positive days ahead. All right, we'll go right to questions from the media. We'll start with uh, Ronnie Woodward from the Greenville Daily Reflector. Ronnie, uh, you should be unmuted, so go right ahead. Yeah, Coach, what are your uh, testing and COVID protocols like right now as you start preseason? And what do you think it's kind of going to be like the next few weeks and as you, you get into the season and get rolling? Well, with, with basically 99% of our roster vaccinated, um, m most of our players and, and our staff will not be tested. So we do have a, a couple of uh, unvaccinated uh, members in our program, and they'll be tested uh, once a week. Uh, you know, leading up to uh, the opener. Uh, and then once we, uh, you know, get to the opening week, you know, we'll be following AAC protocols, which is a PCR test 48 hours out. Um, you know, we are trying to continue to be cautious uh, with, you know, students coming back to campus. We still want to protect our, our, our vaccinated guys even, even beyond that. Uh, so we'll have some protocols in place uh, as well. we we'll go next to Dan Tortora, please. Wake up call, DT. Coach, just what you can say about the evolution of your rushing attack, uh, on 100, almost 174 yards per game last season, which it's been a long time since you've seen East Carolina do that on the ground. Just what you can say about uh, going forward with the rushing attack and the focus on it. Well, you know, we didn't have one in 2019. It was just a real challenge that year. Uh, but obviously, you know, we were able to, to bring in a couple of pretty talented young backs and, and Rajay Harris and Keaton Mitchell. Uh, I think our offensive line, you know, Coach Shankweiler and, and that group have just made incredible strides. Uh, it is by far the best offensive line we've had going into a year uh, as I sit here today. So, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of work put into that. Uh, you know, we want to be balanced. We don't want to be one dimensional. Uh, and so you know, it was an important factor. Uh, you know, for our offense as a whole, we had the ability to run the ball better. Uh, so, you know, I, I like, uh, you know, our, you know, where we are right now. Uh, I think we're going to be much more effective this fall, and I think that's going to make us better uh, throwing the ball as well. And then as, as far as, you know, as a coach having to tackle the normal things that you have to do day to day, now looking at name, image, and likeness, what have you said to your players, and how are you looking at this open opportunity for each of them to essentially be their own small business? Well, you know, I really don't think we're going to truly understand, you know, the gamut of it all, uh, probably for at least another year. Uh, but, you know, what I've told the players is this. Listen, you, I'm all for anything that can help you. Uh, whatever NIL, uh, you know, deals that you make, don't let them interfere with academics. Don't let them interfere with football. Make sure you protect your eligibility. Uh, and make sure you keep your focus where you need to keep your focus. You know, if they can do those things, uh, I do think it'll be difficult to manage a lot of it during the season. But I do think, you know, in time, you'll make it to a point where it will be something that will benefit the players and it will kind of, you know, just coexist along with 
the amateur model that we've always had. Thank you, Coach. We'll take the next question from Trace Trilco, Sons of UCF in Orlando, please. Uh, Coach, you just mentioned your high vaccination rate. What are your thoughts on the league's position that uh, games that Im are impacted by COVID will not be rescheduled and could face a forfeit? Well, you know, those decisions are made above my level. Um, I'm just, I'm happy with the job that uh, our players have done because we t as we talked about it during the off season, um, I was very honest with them that, you know, the teams and the programs that are able to successfully navigate uh, the COVID issue are the ones that are going to have a chance to have, you know, that special season. And I, I do think that there are going to be programs across our country that are going to struggle, uh, you know, greatly with the COVID issue even this year. So I, I don't, I don't, you know, really, you know, have an opinion just one way or the other on what the league's decision was with that. I'm just happy that our players have put us in a position where hopefully we can avoid a major problem. We'll go back to a follow-up, please, for Ronnie Woodward. When you look at a big picture here, Mike, at year three, um, what position group, you know, when you came out to, to practice today and, and moving forward, is there ones that you, you feel good at at this point or the best at? Um, just being comfortable with, with certain guys, certain groups? Well, I mean, I think I feel, I think I feel good about us across the board uh, with each position group. Um, you know, there's, I think there's good depth uh, within each group. Um, we're still pretty young in a lot of groups, uh, but we're so much improved over where we were last year. Uh, you know, this is something that, you know, and Holton and I have talked, uh, you know, a couple of times in the last uh, week or so about this, that this is, this is the best roster that, he has played with since he's been here. This is the best roster that we have had since we've been here. Um, so the program is continuing to build, continuing to improve, uh, and you should see that translate to much better play on the field this fall. We'll go back to Dan Tortora for a follow-up, please. <clears throat> Coach, the evolution of college football over the years, we've seen realignment rear its, its head and, and about a decade ago, and the American Athletic Conference was born out of that. Looking at Oklahoma and Texas and, and all the potential things that could happen with the Big 12 and movement, how are you assessing this from kind of looking through the window at this point? Well, I just think there's a lot of unknown. Um, I don't think anybody really knows what the impact of that movement's going to be. I think it may be a couple of years before we know. Um, I do think it will impact the American Conference. I think it will impact East Carolina University. Um, I hope that it's for the positive, uh, but there's no mistake that, uh, you know, when you have, you know, two programs of that caliber uh, making the move that they made, uh, you're going to see some major shuffling around uh, nationally. So, um, you know, the next couple of years are going to be interesting. Uh, each institution, I'm sure, is going to try to do what they need to do to put their, their, their own programs in the best situation possible. And we have a follow-up from Trace Trilco, please. Well, continuing with that theme, what do you think these moves mean to the health of the sport of college football? Well, I mean, it's, you know, when you started the formation of the Power Five, you know, however many years ago, uh, and you had a group that kind of separated from the rest of FBS, certainly there was a shift there uh, financially uh, and, you know, in recruiting and in everything else. So, you know, this is going to have a similar uh, impact. Uh, you're going to see, you know, possibly a widening gap between the SEC and everybody else. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I just I hope, you know, with some of the transfer stuff, with NIL, with, with things like this, I just hope that we're able to protect uh, the integrity of the sport and, and protect the student athletes. I just I want to make sure that it remains, uh, you know, what it was designed to be. Uh, you know, you have the NFL, you have the CFL, you have your professional sports leagues. Uh, college sports is still about student athletes. Uh, and I just, I don't want to get away from that to where it's all about money and, and things along those, those lines. I just don't think that's what the college game uh, is supposed to be, in my opinion. Coach Chris Budden back here in studio for Holton, who's played 30 games uh, for you guys. Where has he made the biggest jump since he came here on campus? 
You know, he, he's made so much improvement. Uh, you know, he, he made a you know, pretty good jump from uh, 19 to last year, and I think he's continued to improve uh, going into this year. Um, I think he's, he's done a great job of continuing to develop his body. Uh, he's probably in the best physical shape that he's been in, uh, at least since I've been here. Um, you know, his completion percentage went up drastically last year. Uh, I would anticipate that to continue to trend upward this year because his decision making uh, with our offense has continued to improve. Um, you know, and, and the big thing that we've talked about, you know, since I got here is just, you know, not forcing things and, you know, taking things as they come to him. And I think he's, I think he's improved drastically with that. So, uh, as I said on a uh, interview earlier, um, it's, you know, it's certainly reassuring to have the kind of experience that we have at the quarterback position going into the season. Hey, Coach, Rini Angolia here. Uh, when you took the program over three years ago, I think one of the issues you inherited, and I think we may have talked about this, was physicality up front, both uh, with offensive right. line play, defensive line play, and I think you made a concerted effort to get better there. And you talked about the offensive line. How do you feel about those two positions going on for this year? Really good coming out of the spring. Uh, obviously, we had a helmeted practice this morning, so uh, we haven't had any uh, physical contact yet this fall. But, uh, you know, coming out of the spring, I felt like our physicality was, uh, you know, much improved, not only up oh, front, uh, but at our stand-up positions also. I think, you know, our secondary uh, with their tackling, uh, closing speed, uh, there's been drastic improvement there. And I think our, our ball carriers and their ability to run behind their pads uh, has improved drastically. So. You know, I think we showed that last year that we're, uh, you know, developing into a physical football team, and I would anticipate seeing another significant jump this year. As you guys, Coach, begin fall camp and 21 returning starters, that looks so good on paper. Where's the position group for you that's the biggest question that you want to have figured out by the time you finish fall camp? You know, it's probably still the defensive front, and I, I, I don't say that because – I don't know what we have. It's just I say that because they are so young. Um, we played a lot of freshmen up front last year. Uh, the good thing is they're not freshmen anymore. They have a year of experience under their belt. But they're still young players. You know, you look at the offensive line, you know, I feel really good about that group because you have a mix of young guys, and I do have some older guys that are experienced. So, uh, you know, our lines were, you know, probably the weak point in the program when I got here. I think we've strengthened that greatly. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, just seeing if we can play at a high level consistently on the defensive front will be a big, uh, you know, a big indicator early on as to what kind of success we can have. And, Coach, you open up against App State in Charlotte, uh, and then we know how good the American is. So talk about your schedule, what you got to face this year. <laughs> well, it, we, we've got a pretty tough one now. So, uh, yeah, you, you, know, you know how good Sorry. our conference is. but. You know, Appalachian State, uh, you know, I know the program very, very well. Uh, Coach Jerry Moore was a, a friend and mentor of mine uh, and, and remains so. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a team that's they're senior laden. Uh, those guys, I don't know what their one loss record is in their career, but, I'm, uh, you know, it's going to be really good. I mean, I would imagine they've averaged about 10 wins a year during the during the time that this group has been there. So it's a it's an old bunch that uh, has won a lot of ball games. They've won in. In, in big games in SEC and ACC stadiums the last several years. So, you know, we certainly have a challenge there in the opener. And then you know, return around the next week and you have uh, an SEC East team in South Carolina coming to visit us here in Dowdy Ficklin. So pretty tough one-two punch to open it off. And then a, a tough road game at uh, preseason Conference USA favorite Marshall for week three. So uh, it's a tough early season schedule. We'll know exactly what we have you know, coming out of those first three games uh, before we hit conference play. Well, Coach, we thank you so much for taking the time. we got less than a month. We'll let you get your guys ready to open up the season in an NFL stadium on a Thursday night. That's no doubt. That's pretty cool. Well, thank we're you excited. so much for joining us. Thanks a lot for having me on. Go Pirates. <laughs> Rini, you've covered this team a lot um, in the past, and you asked him about the physicality. Yeah. How, have you, how much have you seen it grow under the three seasons? A lot, and I've done a lot of ECU games over the years, and so that was the big thing. When he came from JMU, you know, won a national championship there. Uh, they lacked physicality up front and really across the board. And so you always hear new coaches talk about the culture, bringing in their culture. And that was part of it when he got there. Changed the culture, and part of that is physicality. And he's done an excellent job. And again, uh, to me, ECU, I think, is going to be the surprise team in the American this year. Watch out for them. 
well, you heard it there first. Yeah, the, the, the 30 games that the Aylers has played, when you also look for the rushing yards, 173 rushing yards per game last year, the highest for the program since 2007. And they have a lot of backs coming back, Raji Harris, King Mitchell, uh, just a load of talent. I also think when you have to play that kind of schedule early on, helps to have that veteran leadership that, hey, if you get kicked in the mouth a little bit, you got some guys who can come back. And you better be able to run the ball yeah. when you play a schedule like that, especially the first three they're starting with. So Raji Harris was, I, I think, a, a really great surprise for them last year, co-rookie of the year, and just a big, powerful back with speed. So if that offensive line can just kind of win the line of scrimmage, push off, and give a big back like that some room yeah. to get to the line of scrimmage, press the hole, they're going to do well in the running game once again. And that opens things up for Holt Nailers. Yeah, now they allowed nearly 38 points per game last year defensively. Where do they need to make some improvements, and do they have the guys to be able to do it? I think they do, and I think it's just another year of experience. And I'm going to go back to that physicality thing because you heard a Coach talk about making tackles and tackling in space and just getting physical at the point of attack. So I think they're going to get better at that this year, so I think they will be an improved defensive unit. What is it about year three? I don't know. I just think it just takes that long. I mean, you're dealing with college age kids, 18 to 22, and you know, and, and they were you, the upper class were used to a way a different head coach did things and assistant coaches. Then you bring in a whole new staff, and just everything's different. Not just the terminology, just the way you want to go about your day, to show up to practice, the way to practice, the way to go to class, the way to study film. It all changes when you bring a new coaching staff in. Plus, in a 2020 year when you couldn't really have meetings, yeah. you couldn't have dinners, you couldn't do all this stuff. So looking forward to see what the Pirates will bring us in 2021. Meanwhile, we have some of the players joining us right now. Uh, Holton Ehlers, quarterback, and Jaquan McMillan, cornerback for the Pirates. Guys, thank you so much for taking some time and joining us. We're going to let the media ask you guys some questions. And we'll get started with Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call DT, please. Uh, for both of you, but Holton, uh, you know, your side of things, just uh, raising your completion percentage, a, a statistic that's gone up for you, just what you can say overall uh, you're seeing from your game, looking back on film as you get into the season. And Jaquan, seven interceptions in two seasons, just what quarterbacks should know about you? Um, just know I'm going to compete at a high level in everything, every play. Um not to, I guess not to come to my side. I study film a lot. Uh, I'm going to know what, what's coming. That's about it. Yeah, like you said with me, it's just about um, completion percentage. I mean, anytime you can get the ball in those guys' hands, um, we got pretty good skilled players um, at every single position. So anytime you can get the ball in those guys' hands, I mean, it's better. So anytime um, I can raise that, um, that's a big deal for me. And then for you both, uh, just thoughts on name, image, and likeness being in a new world for student athletes where you can actually benefit while you're in college. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I mean, it's, it's a definitely a good plus. Um, you know, I mean, anytime you can do that and benefit from it, you can. But, I mean, the main focus is still the main thing, and that's football and, and getting to a bowl game here, and that's what we're focused on. Yeah, I agree with Houghton. Um, I think it's a great thing. Uh, obviously, it's history. Um, it's a good way that uh, student athletes can uh, make money off their, their name and likeness. And, uh, but like he said, the number one rule is the team, and we, got, we all have one goal. We'll go next to Ronnie Woodward from the Greenville Daily Reflector, please. Hey, Jaquan, looking at uh, the big news of today is the preseason poll and that ECU and Navy were picked tied for eighth, I think, among 11 teams. Uh, what do you think about that? Is that kind of stuff motivation at this point in the year or, or, or no? Um, just what do you think about that standing? Um, it's definitely motivation, motivation to me uh, to keep working harder. I want to be at the top of the lift. I don't want to be tied with anyone. I want to be number one. So, yeah, it's definitely motivation. So I'm going to go out to practice, compete every day like I do, and uh, keep striving for more. And Holton, uh, we've already, the past few minutes, the, the word surprise team has been used about ECU. When you hear ECU can be a surprise team in this league, um, you've been around it a while. What does that mean to you when you hear that? Yeah, um, I mean, we've always been looked over. Um, we might be a surprise team to other teams. We're not going to be a surprise team to ourselves. Um, we hold ourselves very um, accountable in, in what we do, and we take everything personal. Uh, you were talking about the predicted to finish eighth. Um, I don't think any of us strive to finish eighth, so we'll see how that does at the end of the year. 
We'll take the next question from Eric Gullickson, WITN TV, please. Hey guys, can you give us uh, your, your thoughts on today's first practice, how, how everyone felt out there, what everything was like getting back out there on the field? Felt good. I mean, anytime you can get back there, out there on the field, um, you know, I mean, camp's always an exciting time of the year. It's the start of the season, um, you know, about a month away from opening kickoff. So it's an exciting time. I mean, this is what we work for year round and I'm just excited to be out there. Yeah, Sam, it was a blessing to be back out there to compete with my team, get better with my team, work hard. And yeah, that's about it. Coach talked a little bit about how happy he was with how the defense played towards the end of last year, those back-to-back -back wins. Can you elaborate on, you know, where you see you guys as a group right now on defense? Uh, I feel like we're just competing at a high level now. Everybody's competing. It's not just uh, one group or or the other group. It's, it's all of us that's competing. We make a, it, we, it starts in practice. The offense pushes us and defense, we push them. So when that when you come in and practice, you competing, it's going to come even uh, easier in the game. And Holden, can you can you tell us a little bit about you know carrying over the offense? It sounds like you got a ton of guys back. Uh, familiarity is always a huge thing when you go into a schedule like you guys are looking at. So you know, are you able to start a little ahead of where you maybe were last year? Yeah, I think we're definitely ahead. I mean, I think it's probably the most ahead we've been just because, like you said, I mean we're returning uh, ten out of eleven starters, and I think most of our two two deep is back. So you can just kind of jump into things. I mean, most of the guys that have been here have have played in big games here and have played for a long time here, not just even one year, but multiple years they've been starters. So um, it's definitely comfortable. Um, we can definitely jump into things and, and add stuff to the playbook a little bit quicker on in preseason. Okay, we'll go back to Ronnie Woodward from Greenville Daily Reflector for a follow-up, please. Holton, there's been a lot of talk, and Coach Houston seems confident in the run game, the, the running backs and the offensive line kind of working together. Uh, just what's your perspective on that? And it seems like that could be a strength of this team. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, anytime that you can run the football, it opens up the pass and it helps you win games. I mean, late in games when you got to run down the clock to win a game or you got to go drive the football down the field, it's not always just going to be a pass. And um, I think we've seen that. I mean, the games that we've won, we, we've had to run the ball in, in key situations. And I mean, I think that could be a, definitely a strength force issue with the backs and the line that we have. Jaquan, Chris Button here in studio. Uh, you made it known that wide receivers shouldn't uh, go your direction. Where does that uh, kind of confidence come from? And Holton's laughing. Is this what the trash talk is like when you guys are on the field? Yeah, that's it. Uh, yes, ma'am. It just comes from competing. Practice uh, makes perfect. And uh, yeah, it just comes from competing, uh, it's pushing each other in practice. Uh, one, we check on the one, one, uh, one uh, each other. I'm sorry, uh, each other. Uh, um, that's about it. Rini and Goli here, uh, Holton. I got to ask you now. We know your dad's the PA announcer, right? So I'm just curious. Uh, you know, he's watching every rep. He, he's watching every play. When you go home for family dinner, is he ever critiquing you, or and, and do you ever critique him? And like, Dad, I didn't like your voice on that one call. Anything like that going on? Nah, it's all just support. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't even hear him when I'm in the stadium because he usually gets so loud and I'm so laser focused on the game. But it's been cool for my family and people around Greenville um, to just kind of watch and kind of watch us grow into that. But yeah, I mean, it's been cool. It's been a blessing for me and my family to go through this. Now in your fourth year there, how are you a different quarterback than when you stepped on campus? Uh, I'm totally different. I mean, I think I'm a different person too. I mean, I've, I've grown in um, to a man now. I mean, I've, I've been through a lot of stuff here, um, a lot of hard times, and you know, hopefully, you know, this year is a lot different. Um, you know, this, this team is this team is a lot different than the teams that I've been on in the past, and the guys that we have, and the camaraderie that we have. But I mean, just me individually, um, it's just being a leader. Um, you know, you've been in that situation before, and these guys trust you, and they've seen you in these situations before. So just any, anything I can do to help out the team, that's what I'm going to do. Jaquan, seven interceptions in the last two years. This conference has a lot of really good quarterbacks. Anything special you do to prepare for those quarterbacks? Anything in film? Any little traits or things you try to find with these quarterbacks? What's your key? 
Uh, yeah, just watching film, uh, trusting in my technique, and my coach, uh, Coach Ellis. He, uh, he coaches really good. Put in, he brings in a lot of confidence for us. But it's just uh, film study and just trusting what I can do. Well, guys, so thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy fall camp and looking forward to see you play in Charlotte on September 2nd. For sure. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Go Pirates.